All right, and we are rolling. Uh, Ross Atkin, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to uh, do a long-distance Dog Life Radio episode, uh, director over at Fight City over in the U.K., so thank you so much and welcome. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right, awesome. So um, let's see. I wanted to start off a little bit by uh, introducing you. You've, you've got Fight City, a camp out over in uh, the United Kingdom, uh, personal training. You've got combat sports, uh, Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu, uh, e- everything really, as well as strength and conditioning. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit about what makes Fight City so unique and so special? Yeah, well, um Basically, in our gym, yeah, like you said, we've got all combat sports, all the main ones, um, boxing, Muay Thai, BJJ, uh, MMA, um, and then we've got strength and conditioning as well. Um, and that's, in those two worlds, weren't really together in the UK. Um, I know in the States, it's probably been a, been better in that respect for a while, but, um, but in the UK, it was always uh, like you had to go to a martial arts gym um, and then do your strength conditioning somewhere else. The two worlds never really mixed. Um, so there's people with two gym memberships or or fighters that were didn't have any strength conditioning in their their programs or their camps. Um, so we just yeah we just wanted to bring the two worlds together, um, and that hadn't been done in the UK. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. So so we've got a cage, got a ring, got bags, got a track area, and then got a free weights room as well. That's awesome. I've been on your website a couple of different times, and the place looks phenomenal. I mean, it looks really nice because, like, I, I know if if uh, I, that's one of the things I look for. You know, when I'm going to a gym, it, it's got to be nice. I've worked out in gyms and trained in places that are, you know, something like out of the movie Rocky, where it's all cement walls, and yeah. you know, you've got the water leaking down the pipe over in the corner, and yeah. you know, that, that's all kind of good and whatever. But uh, let, let's let's try to clean things up a little bit. I don't want to go and train on a mat and look like I'm going to catch something, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, obviously, <laughs> hygiene's a big thing in this, uh, this industry. You're rolling around on the mat, sweating, and yeah, you don't want rats running across the, uh, the mat before you start rolling, do you, really? <laughs> Absolutely, man. A case of staff will shut you down for weeks. Yeah, oh, yeah. dangerous, dangerous stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dangerous stuff. So you're really trying to bring what you're trying to do there is you've brought the strength and conditioning as well as that full mixed martial arts experience under one roof. Um, are you yeah. finding that you're getting a lot of people that are kind of going back and forth between the two, doing the strength and conditioning, as well as taking you up on that uh, that full member experience for you know Muay Thai or, or BJJ? Yeah, it's funny because uh, a lot of people come in here like doing one thing. And then they sort of migrate to something else, um, so like be that sort of uh, Olympic lifting or strength conditioning. And you know they see the classes going on, and they see the guys training, and and then they sort of dip their toe in the water. And and you know and then some guys you see them, and then a year later they're they're heavy into their Muay Thai or their you know their BJJ fanatics. And and in the same way you know you have guys come from K1 or Muay Thai, and then all of a sudden they they see the MMA or BJJ, and then then they start doing that, you know, and then they they get hooked on that, and uh, and not necessarily everyone um, sort of migrates and leaves the old thing behind, but they, you know, a lot of people do get really into the the next thing, you know, they really sort of expand their horizons and um, and and sort of really get into it. So yeah, yeah, we do, yeah, we see a lot of that. Um, but there is obviously, of course, some people that come in here and just stick to what they they've always done um so yeah and we've got all sorts we've got guys and guys and girls that have been doing it since they were kids and uh if if that's one discipline or and then other people that have uh you know just just started and and then some pro fighters and some a load of amateurs and yeah, and just and obviously we're in the city which is um in london's the sort of banking district the financial district and uh so you get a lot of office workers and um, and those types and uh, as well and obviously they're not doing it professionally and they just do it for fun so we get a lot of those people as well um, but yeah not too many families probably families and younger kids is the only thing missing from, from us really <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I was thinking about that. I was going to ask about clientele and being where you are, getting a lot of the office types or the non-professional yeah. fighters, I guess, is a great way to look at it because you think, you know, somebody going in, I think 
all walks of life. They all want to be in shape and be, you know, healthy, whatever that vision looks like in their head. And I think yeah. I love the back and forth between mixed martial arts or combat training as well as, you know, traditional weights and cardio. And it, it seems like you're set up in that space. Yeah, yeah, we are, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can do anything here. Like, we wanted to have something where, you know, a pro fighter could walk in, a pro fighter can do a camp in here, and, you know, a, a professional would come in here and, and not be missing nothing, and, um, you know, that's what we wanted. And um, But also welcoming and, and um, comfortable enough that, that you know, a normal person, like you said earlier, I wouldn't come in and see like water dripping down the walls and turn around and walk, walk back out because you know I've worked in a boxing gym in the past and um, it was a really good gym like had some great fighters in there you know had some champions come out of there and um, and uh, but the one thing they didn't do as well as they could have done was the sort of the commercial side of it and um, they did lose a lot of business through just not being being that welcoming you know even though they, their coaches were superb and you know and they had everything you needed to be it was like a boxing gym, so I don't think you need to be a sort of a good boxer, but it just, uh, you know, it, it did. It couldn't fund itself really. Uh, well, it didn't fund itself as well as it should have done, just because commercially it was uh, a bit immature, if you like. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things, like when I've spoken to other people, what you just hit on is a, is a, I don't know if it's like an epiphany or something that people sometimes don't get to, but when they do, they realize that their bread and butter, they, they, you can get a lot more in that non-professional space that can help promote the people getting those professionals to come in because you're going to get a whole lot more people that are not going to sign with the UFC or sign with anybody else, you know, these big, big uh, organizations. And you're going to get their money every single month, you know, from a fee because, you know, I sign up for a gym. You know, if it's nice and clean, I'm going to go there. They've got enough weights and go hit a treadmill. If I want every once in a while, go hit a heavy bag with somebody just to mix it up. Kind of cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that, that's, that's, you know, that's true, you know, like the like you said, the bread and butter, it, it needs to make business sense, and, uh, I mean, look, look, for an example of, like, Black Zillions, you know, obviously a great team, but it had trouble, didn't it, financially, and, um, you know, if you, even if, if they can't do it in that respect, the amount of fires they had come out of there on that, had a whole series on tough, and, uh, you know, and they, they got into trouble, you know, you just, it needs to make business sense, and um, yeah, you need you need the general public. You need to keep them happy, and um, I mean, you know, I mean, fires don't mind. But we've never I've never come across a fire who doesn't who wants to be behind closed doors. Really, you know, sometimes they want their mm-hmm. privacy, or you know, but if that's where they're based, then usually they're they're fine with it. You know. And yeah, you know, absolutely. It goes quite well together. You know. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so, how did you get in the game? Personally, how did you get in, involved in, you know, combat sports uh, or in, and in this space? Yeah, just, uh, just lucky, really. Like I <laughs> personally, uh, yeah, I've been a, like obviously boxing's big in the UK, and uh, growing up, you know, we always watched uh, the big fights and stuff like that. And uh, obviously, uh, everyone knows the story of MMA, and it's quite, quite young sport, relatively. So. Um, yeah, didn't obviously have that growing up, and but and obviously like soccer or football in the UK is the biggest sport, and most most young boys that's the route they want to go down if they want to be a sportsman. That's I was the same, you know. So I had um, what you you'd call in the in the states uh, like a scholarship and uh, mm-hmm. for football for soccer, and um, but didn't really work out. I didn't I didn't end up a, a pro at the end of it. Um, so yeah, I sort of had to make a decision where I was going to go and coaching is obviously a, a path that you, you sort of think of and uh, so but I just got into strength conditioning I went down that route and um, so I ended up just a traditional sort of strength conditioning trainer you know sort of normal gym and uh, went pretty well and then from there I just sort of met people and uh, but I decided that that gym weren't really for me I, it was uh, a bit sort of inward looking and I uh, you know I always thought that more business there's more business outside the gym than just in this one gym so I need I thought I need to be in an independent I need to be somewhere where I've got a lot more freedom and I can bring my own people in stuff like that and uh, I just ended up in a in a boxing gym to be honest and um and it you know turned out to be a good good gym like really good boxers in there and um a couple of British, British champions come out of there and 
and um, yeah, and then from there, it, that, that, that just went well. And uh, but then that actually closed down. They knocked the building down, so we had to go somewhere else. And uh, I'd uh, saved up some money, but done okay over the years. And I thought, right, let's just let's just open one. Let's just open a studio. So we started with a uh, started in this warehouse that was literally across the road, and it had an old corrugated roof. It was an old tea warehouse, just to. You know, being in being in the UK, you know, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but um, but yeah, really, it's a really old place. Looked like someone stood in the middle of the uh, the room and shot an AK-47 at the ceiling. There's so many holes in it, and uh, <laughs> you know, if, it rain, if, it rain, if it rained, you know, you didn't have enough buckets to uh, to stop the leaks, and uh, it was really grotty. Like what you described earlier, it was uh, if you look that. You know that should have been in the dictionary. A picture of that gym under like spit and sawdust, because that was what it was like. <laughs> Cracks in the walls. I mean, we started we started there in the in the summer, and um, yeah, no heating. It was just literally like single skin brick walls with corrugated old roof and um, with holes in it. And uh, so we started there in the summer. Loads of space though, more space than you could um, could ever ask for in the, in the centre of town. You know. And um, and then yeah, winter came and it was oh my god, it was uh, so cold. You just you couldn't hardly hold the bars and that and um, freeze your hands off, you know. And um, <laughs> and then uh, it went well until up up until that point. And then uh, then people started leaving. We we was just trainers. We just had trainers there, you know, no no members. And uh, so we looked for another place. We actually made money on it though. We actually made money because uh, oh, like I said, it went well in the summer. We had Basically, all the boxers came over, most of the the trainers, and um, so it actually went well for the for the beginning. But then we realised quickly we got to get out of here because uh, you know it's just not going to work. So we we found a a legit building, like a proper building with heating and stuff, and uh, we moved to that. It was a lot smaller though because now we was paying the going rate um, what yep. we should have been paying before, so we couldn't afford the same size. So it was a lot smaller, but then uh, so we stayed there for a bit and. Um, I had a I had a business partner at the time and he was South African and uh, after that sort of the lease ran out there he decided he wanted to go back to South Africa so I didn't really know what to do but obviously I had quite a lot of fighters there and um, one guy who's uh, now a business partner he he said look you know why don't we do this and uh, it sounded good and I thought yeah yeah let's do it so then so then we that's why we opened, we opened this place uh, after that so yeah. That's to really shorten down the uh, time. <laughs> a lot there, but, uh, but that's kind of how it went. But yeah, yeah a lot of uh, a lot of battles and troubles along the way. And uh, I mean, now we're we're in our fifth year here, so I mean, that's just yeah, probably condensing 15 years there into a couple of minutes. But yeah, we had some had some fun along the way, and and it's just yeah, I mean, it's just all about relationships, you know, like people you meet, people you work with, met some great people, and. Um, rub shoulders to some really good people and uh, and just yeah and just sort of just been nice to people you know been like good service and just try to help where we can and and sort of people stick by you and uh, and it's it's gone pretty well. Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds like quite the journey, uh, kind of bouncing around a little bit from place to place and getting uh, the better and the better, because like, I'm, I'm picturing like those, you know, spit and sawdust kind of place, and then when I go on your website and I see the photos and, you know, yeah, looking really exactly. sharp, oh, that yeah, seems a far cry. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it's a world away. See, and that's the thing, you know, like people don't realize, um, you know, at that time with that, that, that warehouse, my my wife, she she just had our fir- our, our son. Uh, we've only got one kid, but she had my uh, our son at the time, and um, like I'd put put all my money into that, and uh, was broke broker than broke, and uh, sh- she had to stay in hospital because there's something went wrong during the labour, and she was in hospital for like two weeks, but I still had to go and open the gym up because I was the only one with the keys, and um, you know I had to get the night bus in, and because uh, there's no uh, no tube, but overnight in the, in London it sort of stops at 12.30 and starts again at 6 in the morning so you have to get you know if you want to get around in the night you have to use the night buses which yep. aren't much fun because they're full of drunks and you know <laughs> and sometimes homeless people going you know staying on them just to sleep and stuff like that so it's not great fun but um, so yeah I was getting the night bus in so I open up and then 
you know, shooting down to hospital, which was an hour bus ride away to see my wife, and then and then coming back in. So it was, yeah, it was a real struggle. It's a world away from from this now. And uh, go on, sorry. That's uh, that, that's I was going to say. It's fantastic. It's great to hear uh, the stories about you know uh, making it or you know getting beyond that point to a space where you know you're you're more. You know, when you've got a, a successful gym, uh, the, the programs that you're putting together there, and when you're talking about rubbing shoulders and, and kind of the, the stories along the way, I can think about, like, I think about uh, professional fighters, even on, you know, smaller regional circuits and so forth. I've bumped into a few myself over the years, and they are quite the characters. Um, you know, you're, to, to get into that, to be a pro fighter, and especially to be in a cage fighter or mixed martial arts, you've got to have a, a, a little certain characteristic that uh, I'm sure you probably have some pretty wild stories about some of the crazier folks that you've ran into. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, in, in boxing, yeah, there was uh, there's some crazy guys. There's, like, uh, um, there was one guy, um, I don't remember his name now, but he, um, there was a thing on, uh, do you know Sky Sports? There's a big uh, sports yep. channel in the UK, and um, he they did a prize fighter, um tournament and uh he was uh due it was like thirty thousand pound top prize and um he was a bit bit crazy anyway there was a few characters at the gym were a bit, a bit crazy <laughs> obviously a lot of them you know kind of tougher upbringings and stuff and uh so from time to time things would happen there and um but yeah he uh, he he, he ended up inside like he um night before I think it was a Saturday night he was supposed to go in his tournament. He was a favourite as well. It was like 30, 30 grand top prize. He was a favourite. And then, um, yeah, he ended up um, kidnapping his girlfriend and uh, holding her oh. hostage for a night, you know, bef- the night before <laughs> the tournament. And oh, my yeah, God. He, he's still inside now. Well, he's due, I think he's due to get out soon. But, yeah, he, uh, so he just basically blew his whole career the day before and uh, you know th- th- those shows were pretty good they uh, they launched a couple of people but um, but yeah he just threw it away Tony was his first first name Tony I can't remember his surname now but um, but yeah yeah some interesting times that he um, another time you know like people would come in and sometimes people would come in and just want to spar you know and, and they'd get get a bit crazy and uh, kick off like that and you know and people threatening to come back and do this and that to people and uh you know, just descend into chaos sometimes, but um, but those people don't last. You know, they, those people sort of implode, and you know they come and go, and then, then the. I mean, you have to be a little bit crazy, I think, to be in MMA or boxing. But if you're too crazy, you, you won't <laughs> stick around. You know, you uh, you won't have any longevity, and you won't probably make a real career out of it. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you're right. To get in the cage and just say, okay, this, we're going to spar a bit. And, you know, even if you got the big gloves on, it's like, okay, I know I'm going to get hit in the head and get kicked or whatever. And we'll, uh, yeah. that's okay. You know, is, so, that's a certain level. Like, yeah, the thing is, uh, the thing with, like, combat sports is you don't know what you're going to get out of it, if you know what I mean. You know, if you mm-hmm. play another sport, you know, you might be on a weekly wage or you can see a path, you know, wherever it is. You go to college and you, you know, like in the US, you might you're trying to get drafted, or in the UK, you get a, you know, you get a professional contract, and you can see, you know, what other people have done. But in in combat sports, you you don't know, you know, there's some good fighters who just uh, who ain't you don't get anywhere, you know. You can go from, you know, like top the top ten rankings in boxing, and you know the top uh, five to ten might be earning next to nothing, and then you know the top five are earning decent money. But it's so like it's. You know what I mean? There's no, you don't know, right, I'll get to a certain standard and I'm going to earn enough money to make a decent living, you know? You oh, absolutely. In the face and then maybe you'll make money, you know? Maybe yeah, and maybe. Wants you. Yeah, you know, you think about, well, didn't, uh, what's it, uh, uh, Conor McGregor's commercial for Burger King just came out, you know, where it's like, oh, I want to be a mixed martial arts star because I'm going to be like Conor. There's nobody like Conor. I mean, you've got you've got some phenomenally talented guys over, and, and you know, I was I was just listening to a show this morning, and they were talking about Darren Till, how he's going to be headlining over in uh, Liverpool, but they don't know who he's going to fight, and it's like this guy's phenomenally talented, and he's been sitting around waiting since his last fight, and all I could think of is, what is taking so long to get this guy a fight? Yeah, I don't know, and then even he's he, actually in here last week, yeah. He, 
He was. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he was in. There. He came down last week and uh, they, because you just see last Saturday, weren't they? So um, they did a bit of press in here, and Darren Till came in. And, oh no, uh, kidding! <laughs> yeah, no, he was in here. Yeah, on on, uh, on the Wednesday, um, and yeah, did some. He was doing some press, trained a bit, and then did some press stuff. And uh, if you if you search. Um, uh, on Google, if you just put Daily Star, Darren Till, you can see uh, there's a video he did, and he's just he's talking about in the video he's talking about that, um, Deontay Wilder and uh, yep. how he would counter Deontay Wilder's wild right hand. And uh, but yeah, so he didn't press it. But yeah, really like exciting it. Yeah, yeah. and he, I think he's probably the UK's. Go on, sorry. Oh no! Go ahead. You're gonna say you think he's uh, UK's biggest uh, biggest star at this point in the MMA? Well, I think he's our best hope for a belt next belt. I mean, people used to talk about Sam <laughs> Breeze, but he's kind of gone off a little bit now. But Darren Till is definitely. Uh, I mean, I saw him back fight when he fought. Uh, it was now, but it was in Brazil card and. And he was just so impressive, and uh, I think he he actually went out to Brazil, didn't he, and sort of based himself there for a long time. And uh, but really does look looks like he's really good technically as a striker, and I think I think he's a great hope for the UK, you know. Yeah, I th- I think you're right. I think he's got uh, he's got impressive skills, the size. Um, he does look like he could. He he does look like he could give a lot of people trouble. And and when I look at the rest of that weight class, you know, there's a lot of good names. But all I can think of is is, is who are they going to pair him up with for this fight in Liverpool? I mean, they're you know you you want to make sure you give him somebody that's going to be a, a good fight, so you can't give him a you know a punching bag. But you, yeah. But yeah, I guess if I'm if I'm making the matches, I want to make sure it's a fight that you know I feel okay that he's going to do well if not win in. Yeah, they've been uh, to see he's been going back and forth on Twitter with Usman, and he. Um, oh yeah. They, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen too much of Usman. I watched that that tough series. He, I mean, he looks he does look quite good, but I don't know. I haven't seen too much about of him. I can't really uh, couldn't really say. I I probably still. I'd like to pick Till. Yeah, yeah, Usman's. Usman, I've seen a bunch of his fights, and yeah, I saw that season of uh, that season of tough. Honestly, I thought the season of tough. I thought he came across as as he came across very one dimensional then, and that was a little while ago as well. I feel like his his game has definitely evolved. He's he's really strong. He is a strong, physically strong guy. Uh, he's got great wrestling. Um, yeah, I, I don't think show, he, he put a lot of pressure on people, didn't he? he forced people out yeah. of the cage, and he kept the pressure on people. Yeah, he did look very strong. Yeah, and I, I don't think his his striking is is at the same level of, as uh, Darren Till's. I think Till's also a really strong guy too. Different kind of yeah, strength, you know. Where I think Usman's more that wrestling strength. Um, yeah. He Usman's last fight was against that guy from Iceland, that guy Emil, and uh, I guess it, he won a decision that wasn't really an exciting fight. I guess there was a lot of uh, cage work, but Usman was saying he wasn't a hundred percent afterwards. So. I don't know. You got to kind of take that one with a grain of salt, I guess. Most most fighters when they go into the ring aren't really 100%, but you know, I guess you got to kind of <laughs> let the let the let the actions in the cage dictate. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that'd be a good know, that'd yeah. be a good one. Yeah. It'll be a big event. I mean, they in Liverpool, they like their fighting and him being a home hometown boy, it'd be a, be a great event. Yeah, absolutely. So since we're talking about, you know, UFC fighters, UK, Bisbing. So Bisbing now is yeah. saying that he's looking for, like, he wants one more fight, and I don't know, they're throwing around everybody's name. Who, who do you think he fights next? I don't know, really, because that, that's the thing, isn't it? it like, they just, they just throw all the names out there, and I don't, I don't really know what sort of uh, method they follow with it. And they're just going for money now, aren't they? They're just... They're just trying to find a, a story that sells, and you know something like you know, obviously Dan Henderson was the um, was the revenge fight, and obviously George Saint Pierre was just like a comeback, and obviously a big name. I don't really know what they they're gonna do do with him, you know. Yeah, I, 
you know, I had heard a couple of weird names, not weird, but like um, I heard uh, Leota Machida maybe, or maybe even a re- uh, rematch with Rashad Evans. Um, yeah. So I could see and, either and, of them happening. Either of them. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think they'll just, yeah, they'll just, uh, who, you know, obviously who's available, who's uh, healthy is going to dictate, but yeah, I think it'll probably be someone like that, won't it? It'll probably be someone who's been around for a while. They're obviously, they're not going to give him uh, some up-and-coming young buck, are they? They're, I don't think they're yeah. going to react to him in his last fight. <laughs> yeah, I do think that this one's going to be more of a sentimental fight and not going to be a yeah, yeah. pass uh, pass the test kind of thing for some, uh, you know, somebody trying to get past the gatekeeper. I think it'll... I, yeah, I think you're right. They're going to kind of go another direction with it. Um, it's... I know, like Luke Rockhold was throwing stuff out as well about wanting to fight him at 205, but I don't, I don't quite understand why. Where Luke, I think, doesn't get anything by beating him. I think it's, uh, you know, he, Luke's just got to move yeah, on I, I to the next opponent. Anything, does it? Yeah, I don't think no. Usman would take that. To be honest, I don't think he'd even take it. I think, yeah, like you say, it doesn't really do anything for Rockhold either, does it? You know, you find someone who's about to retire. It just kind of, it kind of looks like he's just doing it for his fine get payback really it doesn't really suit the division doesn't really suit uh, his journey really does it I know you can say well he just lost he wants to rub that loss out but but yeah I mean Bisbin's like obviously retiring and you know Luke Rockhold should be trying to get back in there for the title and it, that doesn't really do that for him does it so you can't always go no. after your own sort of personal battles can you no, you see, sometimes you see that where people want to get, you know, avenge that loss type of a thing, and, yeah. you know, I I can see that, but uh, I think, personally, with the, the, I love the way the middleweight um, division is shaken up. I love seeing Yoel Romero and, and Whitaker. That's going to be awesome. I still, I want to see, yeah. Yeah. you still got people like uh, Weedman, and I throw Rockhold back up there. If these guys just keep fighting each other over the next couple of years, I'd be happy buying those. Yeah, I think really exciting division, isn't it? It's um, definitely not not suffering for matchups. And, uh, <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, definitely looking forward to the um, the Whitaker uh, Romero fight. It's, uh, yeah. So who who do you have in that one? I think Whitaker again. I think Romero just he's got the same problem. He's just a big strong guy, but he's just got all that muscle that just gasses a bit, you know, and just. I think Whitaker can just, yeah, just doesn't, does he? Whitaker just stay at the same standard, and you know, if he gets out of that first round, I, I don't see Romero doing too much to him. I know he's got a good wrestling and that, but you know, I just, yeah, it's just that his his engine just worries me, you know. Yep. Yep, it, he does tend to run hot in there. He's so explosive. But just like you said, that can really, that explosive, all that muscle can gas you out real quick. And, you know, I, I, I it's one of those things you can't sleep on him. You can't sleep on him. I think uh, yeah. when he was fighting Weedman, he was, I think Weedman was beating him for most of that yeah, fight. And I think it was in like, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, he was probably up two rounds to nothing. And then he gets caught yeah. with that knee and boom, lights out. Yeah, well, that was one of the one of the biggest knees you've ever seen, wasn't it? It was uh, the way he sort of came down into it as well. It sort of doubled the force of it. That that was uh, yeah, that was a sort of heavy, heavy knee. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think Weidman was winning that. I think he was winning that. I, don't, I think Weidman would probably beat him if they if they fought again. To be honest, um, I think yeah, just I think he's the better fighter. I just but you all Yo was just uh he's just a beast, he's um have his power and his physique. It's like um Engano, isn't it? Ngannou oh yeah. He's a monster as well and um but against Stipe, that was really disappointing, wasn't it? Really disappointing how he um just sort of gassed and was just so one dimensional and just did had nothing. I think was it the third round he didn't throw a single significant strike? I think you're right. I think you're right. That yeah. Was, that was that it was really tough to see. It was kind of, it, yeah. it reminded me somewhat, not entirely, but just one aspect. It reminded me of when Shane Carwin fought Brock Lesnar and was totally gassed out in like that second or third round where he, yeah. he had nothing left. Where, you know, I, I don't, 
I don't think obviously Carwin had better wrestling than Ngannou, but uh, it's just it's uh, it stunk to see that when you when you got such yeah. hype and, and excitement behind a fight and then all that muscle, yeah. you know, and then not it's knowing not how to pace UFC. yourself. Yeah. It's like the old oh yeah. UFC when people turn up with like, you know, don't have any jiu-jitsu or anything like that, he just sort of had nothing, did he? He just went for the knockout and had nothing else and didn't even have any cardio. And when he was on his back, he had no. No attempts at any sweeps or anything, real, ba- no basics of, you know, nothing. It was, yeah, it was a bit painful watching that. Yep. Yeah, it, what, and you're looking at it going, ah, it, this is the highest level. You know, you could argue and say that the athletes in the UFC, you know, it's the biggest MMA org in the world, and that's what we're getting for, like, the fight for the baddest man on the planet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, Stephanie, okay. I think... Um, Definitely, baddest man on the planet is the uh, MMA heavyweight champion now. You know, it's got the they got the most legitimate claim to it now. Yeah, I think so too. I think you're seeing more well-rounded athletes that are are showing more skills um, than yeah. older heavyweights. You know, from years and years past in, in mixed martial arts. Um, I know. I think. I think it was Anthony Joshua and and St- or Stipe was firing a couple of shots over at Anthony. Yeah, yeah. Nothing bad. I think he was just trying to stir the pot to see if uh, what would happen there. But uh, I tell you what, seeing somebody with the skill set of Anthony Joshua in the cage is exciting. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, just uh, I mean, obviously he's a great boxer and um, like loved over here and um, got so, like a huge guy, so much power and getting better and better you know he's sort of the rate of growth for him is amazing he's just you know getting better and better fight by fight improving in inside fights i think his his sort of ability to learn is um is is brilliant um but yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't like to see him take an mma fight i think he'd uh he'd probably go the way of Ngannou, you know uh, absolutely. I think at this point, yeah. I mean, but yeah. could you imagine if somebody, if, if Anthony Joshua, instead of going solely into the world of boxing, if he spent all that time and energy, but actually had the chance to go uh, more well-rounded mixed martial arts uh, 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 training for all the years he's been doing boxing, what kind of a con- oh, yeah. what kind of a uh, it, what kind of a heavyweight he would be? You know, I mean, the oh, physical yeah, yeah. specimen the guy is. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, if you start getting guys like that, like start doing MMA from a young age and a lot of disciplines, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I don't think the heavyweight division has reached the level that it can can yet. I don't think it's as mature as some of the other divisions. And you know, I, I know, like in the states, they talk about you get a lot of um, sort of ex footballers, don't you, go into into MMA and going to the heavyweight division, I guess, especially the big guys. But, yeah, and like when she, once you start getting people that that's their first choice, that's their, that's their sport, and you start attracting sort of the cream of the crop, people like Anthony Joshua, then, yeah, you really can see that, I mean, the heavy, you're going to see a real mature heavyweight division, and, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, well, it's going to be great to watch, and, It'd be frightening. I mean, Anthony Joshua with MMA with a well-rounded skills. I mean, it'd be scary. Like him, him able to kick, and you know, if he had a black belt in BJJ and someone like that, that'd just be, uh, yeah, that would be scary. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. The 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 people of that size are not being. They're not training in mixed martial arts. They're, they're, you know, you're looking at people. They're going into the NBA or, or playing professional football over here in the states because there's so much more money in it. It goes back to what you were saying before. Like if you've got like Anthony Joshua as a 12 year old or a 14 year old kid was probably a big kid and they knew he had skills. And it's a matter of where are you going to go? I mean, are you going to train mixed martial arts and uh, I know when I was that age, that was a long time ago. It wasn't even an option, and now it's if you're thinking yeah. there's a there's that option to go that route with professional sports. Well, where's the money? You know, you're going to see yeah. there's so much more of a chance to get big, the huge money in in other sports. Yeah, and I think it's not because um, a lot of times as well with uh, with kids, it's the parents and it the the parents sort of take them to the first class and and things like that. And I don't, you know, I don't think parents sort of think of MMA either you know obviously it's the fan base is quite young and you sort of need those 
those people to start having kids and and their kids grow up a bit and then they'll start taking their kids to to sort of MMA and things like that. I mean, like, there is, you know, my generation, I'm I'm 35 this year and, uh, like, I've got a son and he plays a lot of sport and he, he boxes and he does BJJ and uh, also plays, like, soccer, football, obviously, being in the UK. And um, so my generation is, but I think still probably a bit fragmented. I think the sort of... Kids that have the guys that haven't had kids now, and uh, maybe in their mid early twenties, when they when their kids start growing up, I think they'll be the kids that probably you know you'll get a generation where they there'll be a few people that have just done MMA or you know have done a lot of MMA as young kids and have got a real solid grounding and background in it, and yeah, and then we'll see what what it, you know the cream of the crop in there. Instead of going to, you know, the usual usual routes, and then dropping into MMA maybe later. No, absolutely correct. I agree. It'll be interesting. I like seeing the the more um, the more organizations pop up. Um, yeah. Because it just helps helps fill that pool of uh, talent. It's an exciting time for mixed martial arts. And then, uh, t- to be honest, you, you think about the amount of fans that there are. That also helps, right? I would think that yeah. over the past five years or so, you've probably seen a, a nice influx into the gym. Because if you're watching the sport, you know, if you go to a gym and see some bags, it's not going to hurt to go get a ta- you know get some lessons on how to actually throw a punch or throw a kick. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if it, I don't know if our gym would have been possible uh, 15 years ago, you know, um, in the UK, because uh, I don't know if you'd have had it. You know, like I said earlier, you need the you need the general public to to join to sort of fund everything and um, for it to make business sense. And uh, yeah, I don't know if enough of them would have uh, would have come in 15 years ago and you know sought out a a boxing coach or an MMA coach and wanted to learn how to hit a bag on their own and you know 15 years ago here I mean a lot women for example 15 years ago wouldn't even go in a weight room because they thought they were going to end up like Arnold Schwarzenegger and so so they weren't even you know bags and kickboxing and boxing wasn't even sort of coming into the mind you know they're still worried about weights so but now yes I mean definitely the UFC and MMA has done, you know, has made this possible really for us. And um, yeah, it's like you, obviously, you know, we talk to members and you see the cross section of members. And it, I mean, obviously, we have more guys than women, but there's there is quite a lot of women now that come in, and um, you know, we get some younger kids as well, and yeah, all sorts, all sorts. And they, you know, they they do they watch the UFC, they watch Bellator, and you know, they know names and. Um, and he, even just McGregor, the you know, amount of people he's eyes he's brought onto the sport, and um, it's just yeah, it's, it really has changed, and it's, you know for the good, and yeah, and it's still growing, you know, it's still growing, which is which is great. Absolutely, absolutely. So what are the what's next for your gym? What are the next big things that you want to do to take Fight City to the next space, or next level, I should say, not space. Well, we, <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. We uh, we haven't been looking for another space. Um, we've been trying to expand, and um, I mean, uh, close a couple of times, but for whatever reason, um, like it's hard in. The problem in London is obviously there's not as much space, and like when I've, uh, when the fires have come over, and um, you know, a lot of the, lot of the fires from the US actually seem to have their own places or, or looking into it and stuff so sort of they ask quite a lot of questions business wise and um, like they, most of them nearly like choke when they pay and put up and uh, I nearly choke when I hear what you can get in the US per square foot <laughs> and, uh, but yeah so space is a real premium in, in London and um, so it's really difficult and um, it's a you know still a growing industry, still a growing sector, and it's it's tough to you know competing with all the traditional gyms and and a lot of them are statics and you know they can just go in there and sort of blow you out the water with their what they can pay. So so we kind of have to be a bit clever about finding a space and um, 
close. Um, you know, a couple of times it's been funding, other times it's been just can't get a contract right on the space. Um, yep. Or we can't just can't quite find. Right. Um, but that's if we could get another location because this has gone as good as it can really. So if we can get an option, then brilliant. It's great. And um, we're constantly working on uh, trying to improve our fight team, expand our fight team. Um, in in everything in uh, BJJ and MMA, um, and uh, also we we do events, we do some shows. We just had a show last night, um, a white collar boxing show, um, and uh, yeah, we just we try and expand those, try and do more of those. We've got uh, we've done some um, caged BJJ, so we got um, a tournament we've held in house. Um, so we've got a cage and. Basically, we just have uh, like a sub-only BJJ tournament in the cage. Um, I've done a, f- done a few of those, and uh, we're looking to do more of that, and um, maybe move it to its own venue, um, and or maybe set it up as a league. Um, so things like things like that, really. Um, whilst we're trying to also get the space, we can do those things in the meantime. But yeah, that, that yeah. That's it. That's fantastic, man. Ross, I want to be uh, uh, respectful of your time. We've been going uh, all getting close to an hour here, so I wanted to uh, just give you a chance if you wanted to plug your, your social media and your location and number and stuff for the gym. Um, I, I don't want to eat up your whole morning here, or afternoon, actually, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's afternoon. Yeah, so um – you can catch us on Facebook. We're at Fight City Gym. Um, we're on Instagram too, at Fight City Gym, and Twitter at Fight City Gym. Um, so we're in centre of the town, in the city district. Um, if you're around, come in. Um, if you, you know, if you're US listeners, if you're over on business, or whatever, pop in. You know, you can come and use us on a day pass and things like that. So yeah, we're all welcome. If you want to get involved on our events and stuff like that, yeah, you just hit us up online and. Um, Available for camps if guys in the US or anywhere else in the world want to base themselves here while they're in the UK or anything like that, just hit us up as well. And yeah, we be more than happy. Awesome. Awesome, Ross. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time today. No worries. That's great. Thanks for having me.